Well, this is an interesting thing to see. You don't see something like this every day. Let's go over there and see what this man has to say about his trailer and his van. Mr. Dell Whaling here. Let's see if he'll come out. Good morning, Sir David Walker. Good morning. How you doing? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'm not going to complain because I figure if I keep smiling and have uh, thanksgiving and gratitude in my heart, I'll know the joy of the Lord all the time. So, are you the same way? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Well, anyway, thanks for taking this video. Last time you did this, I was so excited because I thought it was such a great video. I don't know where I could have had anyone do a better job for me than you did. But uh, I'm going to introduce my trailer and my work here just a little bit as we look around this. Um, I guess this would be a shopping center. And uh, it's in uh, St. Clairsville, Ohio on December the, I don't even know what today is, 5th or 6th? 4th today Fifth? it's all? 5th, I think. Anyway, uh, my name is Dell. Most of you probably know me if you're watching this video. I uh, have a way of making myself known with my signs. But anyway, this is my trailer that I use. It's my home on the road. I'm on the road all the time, full-time missionary. I go around uh, spreading the word that remarriage is adultery and that uh, also that God uh, hates divorce. He really hates putting away the act of divorce. He looks upon the heart and he sees violence according to Malachi. So uh, on this trailer here, uh, big enough to live in anyway, yeah, I just put scripture verses because there's so much there anyway. You notice it's called the vision. And this is what I'm trying to do is to create a vision for God's people that believe in the permanency of marriage. This is so vital, we've got to get marriage restored as one man and one woman for life with no excuses and no exceptions at all. And so uh, uh, what I'm doing is trying to go around starting small groups and it's been good. I've been four, five, different, six different small groups headed toward uh, uh, north of Pittsburgh this morning or today sometime. But on this trailer, I just put some scripture verses, Romans 7, 20, 2 and 3, read that because this agrees with Jesus' words that marriage, remarriage is a continuous adultery as long as you're in that state. And we're thankful to God. We're seeing more and more people uh, come out of adultery. Just lately, a lady in England uh, got a hold of me. Uh, her name is Maureen and uh, told me about the uh, oh, deep conviction she has on the scripture and how she was misled to go into several adulteries. Here's Luke 16, 18, everybody's favorite that shows that uh, just simply you have to read it that uh, if you marry another it's it's adultery Matthew 5 32 same thing if you marry someone that's divorced it's adultery and so I go around the back of my trailer which is I guess everybody's favorite part I go down the road I'm a slow traveler I go about uh, uh, 50 55 miles an hour I don't think I ever go much more than 56 57 well, people doing 70 now, even in interstate highways here, Dave, in, in Ohio is 70 now. And so they're flipping right by me all the time. They see this all the time. Once in a while I get a hog. I never know if it's positive or negative. I get a lot of positive results, some negative. Now, I was telling a, a Jacob in Ohio that the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And, uh, but this is one of my little delights. It's called, I call this little deal here, Scoot. It's my scooter. And it makes 150 miles and, uh, to the, 100, 100 miles to the gallon. It's a Honda, and I wish I could uncover it, but it needs to be covered for the rain here. You'll be seeing me on Scoot later on. And so, uh, the message is pretty plain. I like to make things simple. God hates putting away, not the divorce paper itself, but remarriage is adultery. It's always adultery, Dave, as long as the uh, living spouse of the first covenant marriage is living, it's always adultery. We have a sad scenario in the churches today. 50, 60, 70, 80 percent of our evangelical large churches are filled with uh, adulteries, and uh, it's, it's a sad, sad thing. And a lot of people want to know if it's forgivable. Of course it is. It's not an unforgivable sin. So we thank God for the people that have repented. We're going to have a little engine noise here from the diesel, but we'll move on. Here's Matthew 9, 1 through 12. It's important people read the text in things. And uh, if you read all 12 verses, along with this one over here, down here, Mark 10, 1 through 12, you get the whole context of what Jesus is saying about adultery, taking it back to, to Genesis 2. 
Hebrews 13, 14 is up above. Again, the trailer division. We're trying to spread a vision of supporting, starting groups all over the country. And uh, once you get a group started, I've seen people become excited. Oh, we can invite so-and-so, we can invite, I know this person, I know that person. And so group can go. It's a bit of <clears throat> move around to more noise. I, the front of the trailer is right here. Uh, this, this takes a little imagination, I guess, but it says the gospel is God's power to save. Leave your adulterous remarriage. That's where the rubber really meets the road, is when uh, we have to ask people to leave their adultery. We wouldn't do that five or six years ago, but we're doing that today, asking people to leave. It's the only resolution to the words of Christ when he calls remarriage eight times perfectly adultery. So it has to be left, it has to be forsaken. We're thankful for people that are repenting. And this is done through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That's the message that we live by every day in our lives. We know that uh, we see ourselves buried with him uh, and then um, in death and raised to walk in newness of life with him every day. Okay, so let's go on here. Here's my truck. I lost a couple of stickers that were on the back. Uh, I used to, I, I would have liked to put on no excuses, no exceptions here, but marriage again is... Uh, just what it says here, it's for life. It's not that it should be, could be, would be, ought to be, or might be, it's that it is. Almost anyone would say it is, uh, should be that way, but it really has to come down to a matter of being is. That's the way the Word of God is presented, and God's Word is not relative, it's absolute. So this is me restoring Christian marriage, that's what I do, that's my mission. Now, truthfully, my life is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm in Him and He's in me. Where He goes, I go. Where uh, I go, He goes. We're one. And the Holy, uh, He resides in my life and I live His life. The mission He's called me to do is to restore Christian marriage. And so I'm a missionary like all of us. Just a common term to show that we are all missionaries in this. All of us that believe this persuasion, this Word of God that marriage is permanent. We'll come around the front again. And by the way, <laughs> I like to name things. I named my truck here uh, Faithful. I guess it's white and it's got a little V6 in it. It does a good job of pulling this trailer. It makes pretty good mileage. Uh, when I got here in Ohio, it was making 13.4 miles a gallon. I don't know how many are interested in that, but anyway, it's uh, it's the old V8 uh, 350 with two cylinders knocked off. But anyway, the same side of my truck goes, and you know what, I mean, uh, along with my t-shirt and just these words on the truck here is enough to uh, get people to ask me questions. I really don't have to go out and interrupt people's lives and start talking to them. Uh, they'll say, I saw your truck out there, and uh, I appreciate what you're doing, or what is that about, or what about this situation, or what about that situation? And it's the same way with you there. We just want to get people talking about this. We want to present the word of truth. The marriage, God made it per permanent. He took right from the beginning, uh, <clears throat> God made marriage right at creation. And he established it as two people becoming one, never again two. That's why Jesus called it adultery eight times. Because he performs the marriage and uh, when he does it, he always sees these two people joined together as one. And so if he sees them with someone else, he sees adultery. And anybody that, I, I, I just believe that anybody that's in this situation know that it's wrong. And that if they're co uh, committed to the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to repent and they're going to come out of that. We've got a lot of people also that are just supporters of Christian marriage. We need uh, individuals, uh, couples, that will have a home and uh, support our people that are standing for their own marriage or have repented of adultery. So there's four or five different classes of people that we represent. We all tremendously get, uh, enjoy getting together. There's a camaraderie that you just don't find anywhere else. And so Dave, that's about it. I thank you so much for taking this video and uh, I'm going to be seeing people down the road and if I'm uh, I'll let you know when I'm coming. I try to get a hold of as many contacts as I can. If you know somebody that would like to be a contact, 
or would like to be part of this mission journey, please email at me at a matter of salvation, or uh, yeah, excuse, excuse me, a matter of salvation at gmail.com. A matter of salvation at gmail.com. Dave Walker, thank you so much, my brother.